really? you know, in some cases, Linda Godfrey, in some cases, other researchers, where I have been almost, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I can't think of the word, but to, to the point where almost immobilized, uh, you know, yep. spit, everything spinning and literally sobbing because my head feels like it's going to explode and it's just this overwhelming, you know, I, you can't even move. You, you can't do anything. And the only thing I could think of was getting the hell out of there as fast as I could. And it's always been with a woman. Mm-hmm. Did the woman get that? Oh. No, she was fine. She was having a, yeah. you know, with Linda Godfrey. She was perfectly fine. She and she and she, and, she, and Linda, I mean, it's not that Linda didn't believe me. She said, "Sanjay, I'm really. We need to get out of here." I said, "Yes, we do." And but it was very clear that they were focusing that on me. Now, now here's on the flip side of that, and I'm going to actually I'm going to bring on our guest very quickly here because he's just kind of dialed in. Uh, Steve, are you there? I'm here. Great. Steve, good evening and welcome to the show. You're on the air with uh, Rick Rellis and myself. Great. Great to hear from you, Sanjay, and great to meet you, Rick. Yeah, Steve, nice to uh, meet you. I look forward to our discussions tonight. Cool. Yeah, I am too. And I, I just want to finish up one quick story, uh, Rick and Steve, if you don't mind. Really quick here. Sure. We're, we're, I don't know if you've been uh, listening to the show, Steve, at all, but we've been talking about zapping. And I wanted to mention one thing, one experience I had with Linda Godfrey and another lady. We were researching a site in southern Wisconsin in the Kettle Moraine State Forest. And the two, I, we realized that there was a Bigfoot in a, in a very thick, heavy uh, brush stand of trees. We, we couldn't see it, but we could hear it moving around. And I, I still to this day could kick myself for doing this, but I sensed the ladies up ahead, up the trail, which was very widely mown. It was very good visibility, uh, up about 50 yards. And there was a large flat rock there. And I said, you go up there and wait on that rock. Let's see what happens if we split into two groups. And all of a sudden, I realized that the minute Linda and the other person got there, the Bigfoot in the woods started moving towards them. And I realized, uh-oh, he's going to get between me and the, and the ladies. This, this could get very serious. And so I started walking towards them, and they both jumped up and started shouting because they had seen something come out of the woods and then as I approached, it retreated back. And uh, thankfully, it, it didn't zap me, but it was a very, very uh, interesting experiment, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, yeah, the zapping, you know, I guess uh, we've, you see, we've had a lot of discussion about this. If you're around the, you know, Bigfoot creatures in the woods and they don't want you there, you know, zapping is a tool that they will use to repel you, make you feel uneasy, fight or flight and uh, get out of there. And we're, you know, we, some think it's infrasound related, um, but we're talking about how they can employ it, uh, deploy it, if you will, um, directionally or get you to the, and, and turn it in the volume of it up if they want to. They can make you uneasier. They can make you literally stop and fall over or nauseous. So it's a, Oh yeah, you know, it's something. There's been, you know, it's, been, the research is talking about. Yeah, there's been accounts of people getting sick from it. Yep. So, Steve, what are your thoughts on zapping? On what? Zapping. Zapping. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I could barely hear you there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe these creatures do have the ability to use, as you said, infrasound. And uh, I also believe uh, they have many other attributes that we can't comprehend also. Um, mm -hmm. uh, because <laughs> I guess I'd be more labeled on the woo side. Um, I've been, <laughs> as friends have told me, I've, 
I'm on the Wu train, I guess. <laughs> and uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, nothing wrong with that. No, no, I, I don't think so. But some people do <laughs> uh, take offense to it. But you know, you know, different views is great in this field, and uh, I think all avenues should be explored. But uh, myself, after you know. Like I said, I, I've been into the Fordian world since childhood, and Bigfoot and water cryptids have been, you know, my favorites. But uh, mm-hmm. as far as Bigfoot now, um, I'm really hesitant to even call it a cryptid at this point because there's different... Uh, Explanations for cryptids. Most people, there's two different camps out there. We've got people that believe in just plain flesh and blood creature that it's so elusive, it's just, you know, it's not being, hasn't been found as yet. And then you've got the other camp that believes that some of these creatures could be fall into the para category, uh, like phantoms uh, or Tulpas, which uh, we could get into that later uh, if you want. Um, and uh, as I was saying, um, after following Bigfoot for over probably 38 years now, and I just don't believe it's a normal uh, creature as mm-hmm. we would, you know, uh, what we perceive as normal. Uh, there's just been too many accounts for me uh, that um, these creatures have been seen around the vicinity of UFOs. They have, there's been a few accounts of people seeing them interacting with UFOs coming off of them or going onto them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been glowing orbs seen around these creatures at the time yep. of the sighting. Uh, self-illuminating eyes uh, disappearing in the instant possible cloaking yep. uh, and as we mentioned before infrasound that has even been known to make debilitate people um, this is not attributes of a normal creature in my eyes so I'm more on the parasite now for Bigfoot along with, you know, like other creatures like uh, Dogman, that, that's more of a recent cryptid or labeled as a cryptid. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm more leaning on the side of, like, Dogman and Bigfoot not being a normal, elusive creature out there. You know, I, I just think by now we would have had a hell of a lot more evidence by now all we have is footprints, uh, recordings of them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, interacting with us. Um, this is not a stupid creature <laughs> by no means. Uh, uh, might even be even more intelligent than us, huh? for all we know. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's how I feel about the Bigfoot phenomena. But as I said, uh, a lot of people do not like to hop on that, the woo bandwagon. But I, I think all theories should be explored because the Fordian world, and especially cryptozoology, it, all of it, ufology, uh, hauntings, paranormal, none, none, none of it is proven yet. And all theories should be, you know, explored and not shunned by some groups, and, you know, I know many, many groups, uh, Facebook, Bigfoot groups, uh, and if you even bring up the topic of woo or anything paranormal to do with these creatures, uh, you're thrown out on your behind, (laughs) which I think is, you know, totally wrong, but some of these people are firmly cemented in their beliefs. And mm-hmm. they're not going to believe anything else than, you know, 
their views now on the creatures. And yeah, um, it, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, no, I'll jump in at least because uh, so we just align thinking here. But uh, you know, I've been uh, researching actively researching these things for uh, going on I guess a dozen years, but I'm you know uh, investigating uh, witness accounts and on expeditions and have been on them all across the country for years. And, uh, you know, I'm around these mm-hmm. things a lot. Um, and so I, you know, I, as Sanjay and I were talking about earlier, I think a lot of people start on the, well, it's a primate in the woods or it's a physical being. And the more you're around it, you're more, uh, evidence, I'll call it not proof evidence comes along, uh, that are, you would classify on the woo side of things, but it's just, it's beyond normal, so it's hard for us to explain. And then you realize it's part of the makeup of this creature, Bigfoot, or in your case, you talk about Dogman. Um, but you know, mm-hmm. you can't you can't discount it. If you can't explain it, it doesn't mean you have the right to discount it. And that's what a lot of these online Bigfoot groups do, and they drive me crazy because yeah, I monitor a right. lot of them too. But they get themselves all tied up in this discussion about discrediting what some witness tells them. Hey, and witness you know, send something in and says, I just had an experience where a white orb went across in front of my face when I was in the woods. And I know I was looking at one of these creatures and was being watched and it disappeared. How can that be? And then everybody shoots them down like they're nuts. And, and I, right. that's not right. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. And, it, and I, and I, and, and I think that's, I think that's one of the um, more unfortunate and more regrettable aspects of this field it is this, and we've all experienced it, you know, especially now with the proliferation of social media, you know, throughout every, almost every aspect of our lives, you know, you right. can go into one of these groups on a, in a social media site and say, you know, something happened to me. I, you know, something walked across my front yard and left these huge footprints and I don't know what it is. And and you can be verbally crucified by people oh, yeah. you've never met and probably will and who will just take this incredible joy in, in ripping you to shreds for saying you exactly. experienced something that you know that I, I just it, it's mind blowing. Yeah. Exactly. And I get the same, you know, I get a lot of it from different uh, researchers and stuff. And uh, I've actually get some that say, you know, when you bring this woo factor, it's detrimental to the field of our study. And I'm like, "Uh, not, maybe not so. Uh, Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe that you're not accepting all theories. Maybe that's the detrimental part of it. So, you know, Mm -hmm. That can work both ways, so that's the way I feel about that. But yeah, and you know, uh, those of us that do research and get out and around this phenomenon, and I know you know you do, and you've done a lot, uh, Steve or Sanjay. We get out in the field, and you have some of these paranormal, or beyond normal type experiences. Uh, it's almost like I get you, you get used to it after a while. I record it and I say, okay, there it is again. You know, uh, two weeks ago I was in the, an expedition deep in the Smokies with a group. I watched a white orb for about six seconds come down a ravine, not far in front of me, and uh, I've seen those things before. And I was like, oh, there's a white orb, you know. And but I haven't got a physical explanation for how that could happen at uh, one in the morning out in the middle of the woods in the middle of Smokies miles from anybody. You know, I, I haven't got a, I know, but there were Bigfoot around us at that point because we heard all the other noises and sounds. I can't explain it, but I'm not going to discount it. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, something happened. So let's, let's talk about a specific woo story. Cause I'd, I'd love to get, both of your perspectives on this one, Rick and Steve, together. Uh, this yeah. maybe was about 10 years ago, and I'm sure you both recall this. There was a, a woman quite active in social media uh, circles in the Bigfoot community who insisted that Bigfoot came into her bedroom at night and did her hair and left messages in lipstick on her dressing room mirror. And 
created a lot of controversy. Um, there were some people who thought yeah. she was making it up. There were some people who thought she was desperate for attention. There were other people who thought she was completely out of her mind. And then there were people who thought she was sincere in, in what she was reporting. And quite honestly, even now, 10 years on, I don't know what to think. But I would love no. to hear what you guys <laughs> would have to say about that. Uh, but for a wool factor, that, that, that hits right up at the top. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, a Bigfoot coming in your bedroom and applying makeup and doing your hair is even a bit much for me. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just a Bigfoot that wants to be a beautician. I don't know, but it it doesn't – the validity of that story yeah. uh, is it's, – it's hard to, to, to take in. And yeah, now let me them. throw something else. <laughs> let me throw something else into this. I had I, I distinctly remember a very long conversation with a fellow colleague regarding this woman's claims, and he informed me that there was video evidence that the woman had set up trail cameras in her bedroom and had captured <laughs> something coming into her bedroom, and then of course the camera failed. And I said this to this right. person, I said, with a story as incredible as this is, and I mean incredible in every sense of the word, wouldn't yeah. it be a good idea to show something, to present some type of documentary evidence? And apparently the woman absolutely refused to do so. Well, that, that's a big red flag right there, I would say, in my yeah. eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Rick, yeah. Let's, um, hear, let's hear from you. Well, you know, it, uh, yeah, I would agree with what you said, Steve, about it's kind of at the apex of the, you know, uh, paranormal woo side of things. It's, you know, it's hard to, but, you know, some, you know, people have different experiences um, yep. when Bigfoots are around and experiences beyond, um, you know, just a physical creature, big creature out in the woods kind of thing, whether it's making knocks or whoops or whistles or, you know, there are things that go on that are not explainable. I have had witnesses, uh, particularly witnesses with habituation scenarios, meaning they're around their house or around their dwelling or their farm or I have had those witnesses relate stories to me of things moving in their houses, things, yep. uh, odd things being seen in the houses, whether it's orbs, flashes of light, um, things moving inside the house, um, even while her back was turned, when they have had ongoing Bigfoot experience in the woods. So, um, yep. you know, nobody, no one's ever told me about lipstick being applied or anything, but, you know, there, <laughs> there's... there's there is an aspect of these things that's hard to explain. Uh, speaking of orbs, gentlemen, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but just now I glanced into my kitchen, and in the corner by the coffee machine, I just witnessed a very beautiful, large, uh, silver-white orb, uh, which appeared and then sort of hung in this uh, midair and then disappeared about a split second later. Oh, Steve, it, it, <laughs> let me tell you, there, there is so much stuff happening in this house. It, it's unbelievable. Um, I, I don't know if you I, saw the little video clip I posted earlier today about the, the woman getting startled by the two skeletons and smacking the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, sometimes, that's pretty much how I feel sometimes when, when stuff starts going on. <laughs> so I take it. CNJ, by what you're saying here, um, it sounds like you're, the place where you live is likely haunted. It, well, it, it, it's not so much that it's haunted is, as it is. I, I, Activity. I think, I, yeah. It's a very active area, and I think there's right. something about me as a person, and Rick, you can back this up, that attracts attention. 
from the paranormal yeah. some people are, side. Some people are like that. They're magnets for the paranormal. Yes, yes. Might, magnet yeah. is, is a is a word that's been used to describe me many times. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've used it. You know, having been out in the woods with you, Sanjay, you know, I, I like uh, researching with you because I just like to get you to a place where I think there could be activity. I've done that with you, you know, and just, and then all of a sudden things start to happen. And I think his antenna are just up, you know, a lot higher than others. And it's almost like a sign saying, pick me, pick me, you know, and uh, these things come around right. because, <laughs> you know, and, they, and they do. Yeah. But activity does happen, I, and I agree with you. Some people are, are more magnetic when it comes to this. Conversely, some people, no matter how they try, or they get out in the woods and around, they just don't see or they don't have activity. You know, some people, you know, it's just oblivious. Exactly. So, and I, I'd like yeah, to, I want to take the time to ahead. agree with Rick, Rick saying uh, that many times, you know, around Bigfoot sightings and things like that, there is other manifestations in the home or outside also, which uh, could be like paranormal, like spiritual activity, uh, yeah. sighting UFOs. These things I find tend to follow each other at times, for lack of better words. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't think it's coincidence. Um, uh, maybe it's the person like we're talking about, you know, they attract this kind of uh, a- activity, but I found more times than not uh, these manifestations happen in more ways than one. Things moving, you know, just like was stated earlier. So that, that's yeah. another reason for me to be on the woo wagon. <laughs> yeah. So, so but, uh, let's talk about another the woo side of Bigfoot here for a, a quick second. And this is something that I think is very interesting. And uh, Rick, I, I think you've read some a few of my reports that I've written. And uh, Steve, I don't know if I've shared, been able to share any with you or not, or if you've had a chance to read them. But um, mm-hmm. one thing I always try to do in my reports is provide a, a, an example or to say if someone was in the woods and they heard a branch snap, I could present a reference. You know, branch snapping is an activity associated with Bigfoot behavior. But then you get into the woo side of things. And so here, here is my question. Can we now, as a community of Bigfoot enthusiasts and researchers, can we say we have enough qualitative evidence to provide quantifiable data? Or reference, right? Um, you know, uh, I know, I know, you, I know. I, I think if I follow what you're saying, do we have enough occurrences of this to be quantifiable and uh, uh, be categorized as data or legitimate as data? Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I don't. I, so. I don't know what I would. So I went, if I took it to the next step on it, not, you know, just from a statistician standpoint, but we have enough correlation of similar correlation of similar woo occurrences um, that, that line up. I mean, you can stack these things up on the woo side, just like you can on the physical side, footprints and recordings of calls and all. You can stack them up on the other side and they're the same type of things that occur yeah. you know, repetitively. Yeah. So, I think that's viable, but, you know, I don't know what constitutes proof. Like I said earlier, I think we have evidence. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. Um, no amount of evidence for, for, the one, for the two camps here that I spoke of earlier, no amount of evidence will ever be proof enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of, yeah. of the wound factor. They're firmly cemented, and this is, you know, like a missing link or an uncategorized ape man that's roaming. Now, this creature has been seen in every state of the U.S. now, Um, and also in other countries now. U.K. is being reported. Now, you really can't hide a creature like this in the U.K. 
let alone the U.S. Um, the U.K. You know, the force or supposedly even you know smaller area. Uh, this creature is being sighted worldwide now, so it, it's just not logical to me that it's a normal creature. And they... well, you can't. Yeah, so to, you know, to, to your point, you can't explain it away on uh, you know a species, no. a Darwinian species lineage, you know, trackable back to you know Gigantopithecus in China, you know, anything. you just can't do it. Right. You know, no. there's too many, too many sightings of currents. So that's why I get back to what you were saying. So, okay, Bigfoot being a cryptid or not, you know, you posed that a moment or two ago. So if it isn't a cryptid, you know, and then you go down the physical route, it doesn't, yeah. that doesn't jive either. So, you know, what is it, you know, and I'm not stuck in categorically trying to figure out what it is. I, I just think, you know, to Sanjay's point, there's enough folks who have experienced Bigfoot that, you know, three of us here, other, yeah, we know it's a legitimate thing. Right. And I, I'm still astounded that some people, you know, I, I run my group Anomalous Universe, and a, a lot come in and they're not believers in the Bigfoot phenomena at all. And I'm like, after all this evidence, is, I mean, what do you think is making these giant footprints? There's not all these hoaxes running through the woods doing this, you know. There is some, right. but there's not. But there's not all these people making all these footprints and and all these accounts. It, nothing can account for these creatures. Um, so the ones that say uh, no, it's just a figment of people's imagination. I, I'm really astounded by that answer. <laughs> but, right, uh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and, and what I have found in my own experience, uh, Steve, is when people say that to me, well, how do you, how do you prove this exists? How, you know, you know, how do you go find a Bigfoot? And I will say to them, <laughs> yeah. you know what? I tell you what, I'm going out tomorrow, uh, Saturday night up in the woods and I'm going to go, you know, on an investigation. Why don't you come with me? And mm-hmm. I kid every single time. Oh no, 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 no. That's too dangerous. That's too frightening. Well, you, yeah. you wanted to go see where the Bigfoots were, you know, I'm, I'm going to take you. Come on, we'll go. Oh, well, no, right. no, 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 that's okay. We we don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then they oh, never man. bother me about it again. <laughs> <laughs> but they still stick steadfast to their, oh, it can't, it can't exist. That's what, yep. you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. people can be so close-minded at times. And, you know, if it goes against their beliefs, I hate to say it, if it goes against their beliefs right. or or even religious beliefs, it's 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 just not discussed. They don't want to discuss it. They don't want to even try and believe in it. Right. Exactly. So it's exactly. Just, it's, and, just uh, yeah. it's very sad. And, uh, but it, it it goes back to you know you know when we think about you know the legends of especially the indigenous peoples of this continent. And all of their own, you know, myths and stories about, you know, not only the creation of the world, but the creatures that come into it. You know, for them, this is just another creature that they inhabit the earth alongside. It's nothing to be, you know, it's just, oh, yeah, him over there. Yeah, you know. You know, I remember. You know, I remember growing up in South Dakota, and uh, you know, playing with you know Lakota, some of the Lakota boys. And yep. every so often, you know, they'd look at the over across the field and at the woods, and they'd say, "Oh, Chiatanka." Yeah, yeah. Yep. Say, and yeah. Well, who's that? Well, oh, that's he. Just he watches us. And and you have to remember, in 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 many tribes. You know, family relationships are very fluid. You know, your uncle is considered your father. Your, you know, your yeah. uncle's children are considered your brothers. So the term brother has a very broad definition. So when they would say, oh, Chie Tonka, he watches us. Well, right. okay. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't even occur to me <laughs> that yeah. they were talking about something very, very, very different. It's completely and natural, just, especially to Native Americans. Yes. To the Native Americans, it, it's just completely natural. They've always, they say they've always lived along beside them, and it's, you know, and they attribute 
of them that, as they're, they're magical and things like that. And 